Hello everyone, and this is an Atomicraft tutorial. And I've been playing the game quite a bit lately and, and enjoying it a lot. It's also in the Game Pass right now, and it's one of the best games on there, period. And I made this I wanted to make this video to urge people, new players, to play it and actually try it out. And with all that being said, let's get into it. Atomic Crops is a roguelike farming game where you have to grow crops while defending them at the same time. And you also have to explore different parts of the map, different areas, different islands, where you can get items, upgrades seeds and other things to help you along the way but to do all that we have to get to the most important part of the game to begin to understand farming it is important to understand different tiles associated with farming first and foremost the most apparent one that you'll see at the start of the game is the green tile that's called hard crust and hard crust is absolutely useless to you and it's only there so you can get rid of it like your hair children are old people now luckily you can get rid of it like i said using pickaxes they can find throughout the game located in the bottom left corner and there is one exception to the rule that hard crust is absolutely useless, and that is one item you can get in the game that allows you to place turrets on the crust, and that'll make more sense when you get the items, but there is that one exception I had to admit. The next tile we're going to be talking about is dirt. Let's start off with a 4x4 area seen here. You can also uh, make more dirt using pickaxes to break hard crust. So when you break hard crust, you get dirt. Dirt is important, unlike hard crust, because dirt allows for the potential of crops. To begin to actually utilize dirt, you have to till it. And when you till it, you get the most important tile in the game. Similar to dirt, it allows you to place turrets on it. However, unlike dirt, it allows you to plant crops. And the planting of crops is the most essential part of the game. And you can see the soil here. The next tile I want to talk about is dark soil. And dark soil, unlike normal soil, cannot be made by the player unless it has a certain item. Also, dark soil, unlike normal soil, allows you to harvest two crops before it turns back to dirt, unlike normal soil when it's just one crop. And I'll explain the differences between the, the different tiles a little bit better, the relationships between them visually, but for now just know that dark soil is just basically a better soil. Now there are two more tiles I like to talk about, but they're not very different from than the ones we've talked about already. First one, you have uh, wet soil, seen here. Wet soil is just like soil, except it makes crops grow faster on it. And the next one is wet dark soil. Wet dark soil, just like wet soil, does the same thing, allows crops to go faster on it. To recap the tiles we have learned, we have hard crust. And once you break hard crust, you get dirt. And when you till dirt, you get soil. And when soil gets tilled, which a player can't do alone without any help, you get dark soil. Now, whenever a crop is harvested from soil, it goes back to dirt. Whenever a crop is harvested two times from, from dark soil, it goes back to dirt. And you can till dirt and make it go back to soil. And through means other than the player, unless you have a special item, you can turn soil into dark soil. And for the last two we have wet soil, which is the same properties as soil, except that crops go faster on it. And lastly we have wet dark soil, same properties as dark soil, except crops go faster on it. When you begin a game of Tomo Crops, you'll spawn next to a basket which contains four potato seeds when you collect it. Next, in order to plant this seed and every single other seed you'll get throughout the game, you must have soil, and to get soil, you have to till the dirt around your farming area. And now since you have soil, you can begin to plant your crops. Now that you have planted your crops, they'll need one last thing, and that is water. To get water, you have to go to your well, and stand right next to it, and you should see your water go to 100% in the left, the bottom left corner. It should go to 5 out of 5, 8 out of 8, 4 out of 4, however much water you have, it should max out. And your crops will need water through each growth stage, so when you water them, they'll get a little bit more out of the dirt, and a little bit bigger. And when you water them again, they'll grow again, and get a little bit more out of the dirt until they're ready to be harvested. And when they're ready to be harvested, they're going to lighten up and jump around and be like, yippee! they'll make those kind of noises and after all that is done you can now harvest your crops now that we know how to plant crops it's important to know why we're doing it in the first place the goal in planting crops is to get cashews or money and money can be used to buy you various things to help you along the way when you play the game as you see here when we harvested our one potato plant we got three cashews and the total amount of cashews you have can always be seen in the top left corner here but there is a way to make 
crops more valuable before you harvest them. And that is by fully fertilizing them before you harvest them. Fertilizer can be seen in the bottom left corner here. You're going to find it around the map. Anywhere you go, most actions you do, killing enemies, uh, harvesting weeds, stuff like that, you're going to get fertilizer throughout the game. And before you harvest a crop, it's a good idea to usually fully fertilize them to get more money or cashews. We can see here that fully fertilizing one potato crop got us three more cashews, so double the value. Now they understand how fertilizing works, something else that you can understand. When you place crops in a 2x2 two two area all next to each other, and it's the same type of crop, you can fertilize them fully, all of them together, and they make a mega crop. And that mega crops are significantly worth more value than normal crops or normal fertilized crops. Significantly more. And that is the most important thing to be able to progress you in the game is mega crops. The last thing I'd like to talk about is becoming energized. To become energized, you have to complete any farming action, like tilling dirt or cutting weeds. Now with each task, you'll see a bar at the bottom of your screen begin to fill, and with each task, each part of the bar will fill. And when that bar is finally full, you'll become energized, and then you'll start completing all farming actions quicker. Now that we've talked about fertilizer and mega crops, it's important to talk about some of the unique crops that don't exactly adhere to the fertilizing rules we, we have established. Now all crops can become mega crops, that's, that's uniform. Every single crop can become a mega crop. Not, but not all crops exactly fertilize the same way. Now for 72% of the crops in the game, they work exactly like potatoes and they work exactly like corn, it's all the same. When you fertilize them fully before you harvest them, you get more money. And that's the same for 72% of the crops. And most of the crops in the game work like that. But there are a few crops that don't exactly work like that when you fertilize them. The first different crop I'd like to talk about are fruit trees. And fruit trees are unlike crops for several reasons. The first one I'd like to talk about is how much space you take up. So when you plant a normal crop, like a potato, it's a one by one thing. You know, you harvest it, it goes away. Trees, not at all. When you plant a tree, it takes up a two by two space. And when you harvest it, it doesn't go away, it stays there. But it does passively generate you income by the, the um, fruit that it generates when you harvest it. And it also is different from a normal crop when you fertilize it. When you fertilize a tree, it's good. You fertilize a tree, it'll always be fertilized and uh, produce you more cashews per fruit. But with the crop, you have to fertilize it, harvest it, plant another one, fertilize it, harvest it. Trees, fertilize it once, you're going to get more cashews per fruit from now on permanently. The next unique crop I like to talk about is the sunflower. The sunflower, unlike any other crop in the game, does not require water. It also cannot be harvested, so how do you get to grow and how do you make money off it? Well, the sunflower uses fertilizer to do both. So when you plant a sunflower and you give it fertilizer, it'll give you some cashews back. Now there is a maximum amount of fertilizer that you can give it being at 50 fertilizer. The sunflower is also different because if you plant it without tending to it at all, it will just die. So if you just plant it without giving it any fertilizer, it will just die right there. Sunflowers also do not require fertilizer to become a mega crop. The next unit crop is the heartbeat. Unlike other crops, this will not give you cashews, but will instead refill missing hearts. And if you were to fertilize a heartbeat, you'd get one heart and a heart sprout. A mega heartbeat gets five hearts. And a fully fertilized mega heartbeat gets five hearts and two heart sprouts. Heart sprouts are the most confusing part about heartbeats, so I will go over a few examples and explain how heart sprouts work exactly here. Once you have a total of four heart sprouts, you will receive one heart and one more max heart slot. And when you collect these heart sprouts, you'll begin to see a heartbeat start growing on your health bar. Once you collect one, it appears. Two, it grows a little bit more. When you collect three, it grows even a little bit more. And when you collect four, you'll get a heart and a new heart slot. So in this example, you see we have six hearts, we're missing two, and you begin to see another heartbeat that's coming up, that means we have a certain amount of heart sprouts. If you see it at that point, that means you have two. If you don't see it at all, that means you have zero. And that's the way you can measure how many heart sprouts you have, you have gotten so far. Now, this, now in this example, we have two heartbeats that are fully fertilized. So when we fertilize them, we should get two hearts and two sprouts. So we should get two hearts and then one more max heart slot and along with a heart with that because we reached our four heart sprouts. So I want to do one more example explaining heart sprouts, and we can see here that we have one mega heartbeat, and we also are missing four health, and we have zero heart sprouts currently. So we know when we harvest a mega heartbeat that we get five hearts, and we also get two sprouts. So first of all, the hearts are going to recover first, so the four missing health will be completely filled. 
but we're, we're due one more heart, right? That will get converted into a heart sprout. So we're going to get one heart sprout. So that's one fourth to the next heart. Now we're also guaranteed two more heart sprouts. So that will give us two more. So we have three fourths heart sprouts. So one more heart sprout away from getting the next max heart and heart. The last unique crop like talk about roses. Roses do not give you cashews. They also do not give you hearts, but they give you roses. I know surprising, right? Roses are just like cashews in the way that you can use them to buy things to help you throughout the game. Whenever you plant one rose, you get one rose. And if you plant a mega rose, you will get five roses. And just like mega sunflowers, mega roses do not require fertilizer to become a mega crop. When you open your info screen on Tama Crops, in the bottom right corner, you should see the areas which you have explored. There are four different biomes in Tama Crops, the brown being desert, the yellow being plains, the green being jungle, and the pink being tundra. For every biome, there are two different tiers, tier one and tier two. So the tier one desert would be here, and the tier two desert would be here. And this same pattern follows with all other different biomes. All crops besides unique crops and potatoes have a biome. And this matters because different crops from different biomes have different properties. So crops from desert and tundra take less water, but more time to grow. And it's vice versa with jungle and plains, with it being that it takes more water to grow those crops, but they take less time to grow fully. And so to see what biome a crop comes from, all you have to do is look at the ring around the crop. And that color will tell you where the crop is from. So this corn is from the plains, and this prickly is from the desert. So we can see that both these seeds come from the same biome, being desert. But since pricklies can only be found in the tier 1 desert, they are said to be bronze tier seeds. And since grapes can only be found in the tier 2 desert, they are said to be silver tier seeds. So we've learned the first distinction among crops is their biome. And the second distinction is their value. Now regardless of what biome a crop comes from, they're going to have the same value, or how many cashews you get when you fertilize and harvest them, or when they're unfertilized and then you harvest them. They're going to have the same value, and they're just going to grow at different rates. So, all crops that have a brown bag, unfertilized will give you 3, Fertilized will give you 6, and mega crops unfertilized will give you 30, and fertilized will give you 36. And with green bags, one unfertilized will give you 6, one fertilized will give you 12, a mega crop unfertilized will give you 72, and a mega crop fertilized will give you 96. And lastly, gold bags will give you 10 for one unfertilized, 30 for fertilized, and for a mega crop unfertilized, 140, and a mega crop fertilized, 240. Now we get to the pumpkin. The pumpkin was really annoying because I really couldn't decide when to talk about it. It's almost unique crop, but not really. You see, pumpkins have the same value as gold bags, but their biome, as you can see by the color, isn't really there. Well, that's because it's considered tier two of all biomes. So it's tier two desert, tier two tundra, and all the rest. It's just very, very odd, but it doesn't stop there. Pumpkins actually deal damage around them whenever you harvest them. And one more thing is that sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds work exactly the same when it comes to their biome. So sunflower seeds along with pumpkins are both considered to be tier two of all the biomes. And one more thing that should help you out when planting seeds is that if you have four or more of one type of seed, it gets highlighted in green. And that's because you can plant mega crop now. Now if you see our farm right now, you see the little green squares, that's basically telling you that the crop that you have selected right now is that same type which will make planting mega crops a lot easier. There are many different kinds of friends in Tom crops, and friends basically help you out, either through farming or through killing enemies. Now the first one I'll like talk about are pigs. Pigs help you by expanding your farm area by breaking hard crust and turning it into dirt. They can also till dirt and make it soil, and they can also till soil again and make it dark soil. There is an upgraded version of the pig called the hog, and the hog does exactly what the pig does, except the hog can sometimes deal damage to enemies to help you defend your farm. And the next friend like to talk about are cows. Cows just water your crops for you. Also, there is an upgraded version of the cow called the grass fed cow. It just waters crops a little bit faster. And the next friend is the chicken. The chicken will eat weeds for you that grow on soil or hard crust. They also will lay eggs from time to time that are worth 10 cashews. The upgraded version of chickens are turkeys, and turkeys do the exact same thing chickens do, except their eggs are worth a little bit more, they're worth 40 cashews. And the next final talk about are bees, and bees boost your crops. And when the game uses the word boost, they really mean increased growth rate, and bees will increase the growth rate of your crops by two times. Also, the starting character Lavender starts out with two of them. And the upgraded version of bees are hummingbirds, and hummingbirds do exactly what bees do, so they do an area effect, so they can boost multiple crops at once. And the next friend is the turret. The turret will help you by defending your farm. Turrets can only be placed on dirt or soil. 
and turrets will also deal damage while pushing enemies back. And there's an upgraded version of the turret called the Kurt, and the Kurt deals a little bit more damage and fires a little bit quicker as well. In the next friend we have the Scarecrow, and the Scarecrow is similar to turrets or Kurt's, can only be placed on soil or dirt. The Scarecrow, however, deals damage a little bit differently. The Scarecrow waits for enemies to get close to it, and then deals AoE damage around it in the circle. And the Scarecrow also has one more ability, and it actually blocks bullets, so sometimes it might help you from getting hit, so that's pretty good. And the last friend we have are drones, and drones, instead of being placed on dirt or soil, are going to follow you around wherever you go and deal damage passively. All friends have one thing in common, and that is that they can all be energized just like you. Now there are three different types of friends. First is farming, you know, farm animals, that do certain actions like watering crops, killing soil, eating weeds, boosting crops, that helps you with your farming. Those are those types of friends. The second type of friend are defense. Now defense are just turrets, they can be placed on soil, like turrets or turrets or scarecrows. You place them on soil, they're going to help defend your farm, they're going to stay there. They're going to deal damage to enemies and push them back. And the last type of friend is the offensive type of friend, and that is the drone. The drone is going to follow you around and is going to deal damage wherever you are and help you. Whether They can help you defensively, but they can also help you offensively because they follow you no matter where. And there are, there are certain items that allow you to get more friends, but th th these are just the types of friends. So you have farm animals, you have defense like turrets, you have offense like drones. So those are all the types of different uh, friends. And next we have the scrolls, and scrolls are really easy to understand because they just build upon what we have already learned. So first you have pigeon scrolls. Pigeon scrolls are just like the normal scrolls, the, the normal looking scrolls with paper. You have anemocry, which is plant seeds, rain cloud, which water and boost crops, boost meaning increased growth rate. Tremor expands farmable land, or in other words, break, breaks hard crust. Till soil, and next we have blood rain, which just fertilizes all crops. And you have the upgraded version of the pigeon scroll, it's called the dove scroll, the dove scroll are golden scrolls. Does exactly what pigeon scrolls do, but just better. And after that, you have hawk scrolls, the blue scrolls. They do exactly what dove scrolls do, but just better. And if you ever forget what a scroll does, just go to your info screen, go down, you see Anemicary Breeze, so season every plot, rain cloud, boost water in all crops. So you can just read about what the scrolls do if you ever forget. And there's one more thing about scrolls you need to know, and that is that there is a cap to how many scrolls you can have, but that can be increased through the farming stat. Fighting stats are super simple and you can always just read about them if you go to our info screen. So we have fighting here, increases damage and move speed, and farming improves farming abilities, tractor cooldown, and pigeon capacity. So there you go. So tractors have abilities and these abilities can help you with farming or they can help you with killing enemies and stuff like that. I'm not going to go into each one but I will just give one as an example. So here in the info screen, we can read about the tractor I have right now. It's a Srinko tractor. You can see it says that crops in small area will drop for seed. And there's a deeds trans for trees and special crops. Also, it waters all crops in a large area. And next, we have to exploring, which is a pretty fun part of the game. And exploring basically allows you to farm in the first place with getting seeds and fertilizer. The most important part to exploring is the timer in the top right corner. It's telling you how much time there is left until it's nighttime. So during the daytime, you want to explore, and during nighttime, you are going to want to go back to your farm, defend it, and grow crops. Now you don't have all day to explore; you only have all the daytime to explore. Don't don't think about that much. So once you know that, you can either go to the left or you can go to the right. Starting out, I recommend going to the left because I think it's easier. And going to the right is the plains, and going left is the desert. Now the plains has something that's really, really annoying, and I hate with all my soul. But we have to talk about that right now. So basically, you should go to the desert. So once you're in a desert biome, or any biome for that matter, you're going to find enemies scattered all throughout the island. Now, enemies can be summed up into two different categories. The first one being annoying, and the second one being enemies that guard camps. Now, enemies that are annoying in the desert biome include the scorpion or the ghost bird. But enemies that are guard camps in the desert biome would be the cacti or the can crab. And enemies that guard camps are way more important than enemies that are annoying. The enemies that guard camps are really guarding loot. And camps can, are indicated through structures like walls or flowers or flamingos, or they're indicated through flags. Now, whenever you see a flag above an enemy, you should be thinking, hey, there's loot somewhere nearby. And that loot, the loot can range from anything you can um, uh, possibly think of. It can be pickaxes, tractors, scrolls, seeds, fertilizer, and probably something else I'm, I'm forgetting, right? So once you kill all enemies with a flag above their head, 
the loot will be revealed or dropped at that place. And sometimes you get something very special known as the Golden Pupa. The Golden Pupa is guaranteed for every biome on the map. And whenever you activate the Golden Pupa, it's going to fly away and it's going to lead you towards a flower. And this flower is going to be guarded by a tree monster. Now, in that sense, this is basically just creating a camp with like a little mini boss that you have to fight. So whenever you defeat him, you get a rare item. Like some of the best items in the game drop from this. So definitely you want to hunt down all these Golden Pupas in each biome and get the items because they are some of the best in the game. Sometimes while exploring, you're going to encounter something called altars. Altars can spawn all biomes except for tier 1 desert and tier 1 plains. Or in other words, the starting islands whenever you start a game with Tama crops. So whenever you go to an, an altar, there will be two of them, and each one will give you different benefits. The first one requires fertilizer, so in return you get farming stat, and the second one requires one health, or one heart, and in return you're going to get fighting stat. And one more thing that you might encounter, and it's actually really hard to say, is the Deer Devil's Den. Now the Deer Devil's Den is similar to altars in the way that how they spawn. The Deer Devil's Den will be found in all biomes except for Tier 1 Desert and Tier 1 Plains. Now the, the Deer Devil's Den is similar to camps in the way that there are enemies around it that are guarding it before you can actually enter in the first place. And you're going to see like this like tree thing that has a hole and there's an arrow pointing you to go inside. Now one, more, one thing you, you, you're going to want to know is that you can only enter once, you can only exit once. Once you enter it, you, once you exit, you can't, go it, you can't go into it anymore, that's it. And upon entering, you're going to find the Deer Devil along with two items, right? Each item is going to have some kind of drawback, but a really, really, really good positive. And keep in mind that you can only pick one of these two options. And if you don't want to pick any of them, you can always just leave. And when you do pick one, a little animation happens that you're going to see right here. daytime has run out and your timer has gone to zero it will become dawn and it will become night very quickly and during this time you're going to have to defend your farm and plant crops now you're going to be attacked during nighttime in waves of enemies and you can see how many waves and how much time each wave is going to take on top right corner just like daytime two types of enemies are going to attack you at night the first type of enemies are those that are going to try to eat your crops like slugs and the other type of enemies are known as bundits and they're going to try to attack you and kill you just for fun i guess i don't know and during nighttime, you really just want to try to focus on defending yourself, defending your crops, attacking the bundits, attacking the slugs, and trying to plant crops. You're going to want to try to master this because this is a very important skill just to try to get used to farming, dodging bullets, and fighting at the same time. Because I think that's a very important skill to have to actually have more success when it gets a little bit more difficult later on. So that's it for nighttime. And when night is over, you'll be picked up by a helicopter and go to town. After being picked up from the helicopter and getting brought into town, you'll first see your crop yield. So how, how many crops that you harvested, how much each crop is worth in cashews, and the total amount of cashews you got for that day. Now, cr uh, crops that are brighter than the other ones, the ones that are dimmer, brighter crops are basically indicating to you that this crop is fertilized, and dimmer ones that look kind of unhappier means they are just not fertilized. Upon exiting the screen and going to the right, you will find two strangers, and these strangers are offering you items and upgrades in return for roses. Now, it says you're flirting with them, that's because you are. You're actually increasing your relationship with them, which will mean it'll, next time you want to get an item from them, it'll be a higher rose cost to get the item. But if you eventually, if you give them enough roses, your, your relationship gets uh, high enough to where you can actually marry, marry them. And each character's uh, marriage ring gives you a very special uh, item, and they'll actually follow you around and help you with certain tasks. And next we have the doctor, and the doctor works similar to the strangers, when, whenever you give him roses, he'll give you a heartbeat seed in return, and each time you give him a rose, the amount of roses it takes to get the next heartbeat seed will increase by one. However, he does not work like the strangers in the way that you do not increase your relationship with him, you can't marry him. The point of the doctor is just to give you heartbeat seeds. And next we get to the gun shop, and the gun shop will always offer you two different guns, varying in price and benefits, right? So each gun can offer you a bundle of stuff. So we can see on the left here, the biodegrader, it costs 60 cashews and it gives me two farming stat. However, on the right, we have that, that number one, it means one mod and a heartbeat seed. We also get two farming stat. Now mods in this game are just things that are, that, well, they just mod the weapon. They, they modify the weapon and they can have bonuses. These mods are just bonuses to the guns. So for example, one mod that you can get to, for this roster soaker, which is much like a flamethrower, is to actually water your crops whenever you fire the gun. And the next shop we get to is the flower shop, and the flower shop is going to offer you certain things for cashews. 
So the things that you can get from the flower shop include seeds, pickaxes, scrolls and friends, so stuff like that throughout the game. And next we get to the bridge shop, and the bridge shop will offer you three bridges, that's it. You only get three bridges per day. And each bridge will always cost 100 cashews. And bridges allow you to go to other biomes other than the desert and the plains tier 1. You can actually go to tundra, you can go to jungle, and the tier 2 biomes as well. We have a map here showing how many bridges it takes to get to, get to each biome. We can see here that tundra and jungle take one bridge, we can, and then tier 2 desert and plains take two bridges, and tier 2 tundra and jungle take three bridges. Now, the, depending on how many bridges it takes to get to a biome, it's kind of an indicator of the difficulty of that biome. So I would recommend doing the biome that take one bridge, then two, and then three. So earlier while talking about exploring, we talked about something that you keep track of, and that's the time in the top right corner, so how much time you have left to explore. Something else you need to keep track of throughout your playthrough, and that's also the calendar right below the timer. Now, each season has three days, and after you finish the day, it'll get marked by an X, and then another X, and then on the third day, you're going to see an exclamation mark on a circle. That's telling you that this, this night is very special. That's because every three nights on top of crops, you're going to get a boss, and if you're not already at your farm, it's going to drag you there. So one of the first bosses you can get is the Monster Prod, and Monster Prod has his own little annoying abilities, and every boss is going to have annoying abilities. And I would strongly recommend uh, figuring out how to beat all of them and trying to beat all of them every night because you actually don't have to. You can actually just not kill them and just, that's it, you're gonna go back to town. So I would strongly recommend trying to kill each, at, each and every one because you, sh you should be able to uh, kill the bosses and be able to farm at night. So they're gonna impede your farming abilities greatly. So I'd definitely try to kill the bosses. And one more thing to keep note of is that Whenever a boss does spawn, it's going to keep you at your farm. You can no longer go to any other biomes freely. It'll, it'll keep you like walled in through a barrier at your farm until they are killed. So if you do want to explore at night, you can't do that until that boss is killed. So you've killed the boss and you go back to town and it's strangely quiet and you follow these arrows and you should meet the mayor. And upon interacting with the mayor, you're going to see that you're going to see a bar room and it's going to fill up. And depending on how much it feels like you get certain rewards, depending on how many cashews you got for that season, for the three days. Now you want to be trying to get uh, as much cashews as you can to max out these rewards, but since you're going to be doing that anyway, hopefully, it shouldn't really matter. So once you're done collecting all the rewards from your crop yield and you go to the top left, you should find the rose shop. And the rose shop is just going to offer you certain items and upgrades for roses, and keep in mind the roses aren't all the same cost, they can vary, vary depending on the item. And one more thing to keep note of is all the shops that appear during the festival will only stay during the festival. And if you go to the right, you should find a tractor shop and there will be two different tractors available for you to buy and they'll always cost 200 cashews as well. So there's just a few more things I want to talk about. Firstly, our moons. Now you will get one moon if you live long enough in your playthrough. And if you, these moons are going to chase you at night, they're going to chase you back to your farm if you're not already there. And there are three different types of moons that will spawn. First, you have the rest moon. And the rest moon will just do nothing to you. You can just farm in peace. Secondly, you have the slug moon, which is going to spawn a lot of enemies along with slug as the, as the main force to try to eat your crops. Secondly, you'll have the alien moon. So aliens are going to try to come down and take your uh, for, uh, friends away from you. The second thing I want to talk about are permanent upgrades. So whenever you do a run of atomic crops, sometimes you're going to find these things called ant heals, and they're going to uh, unlock for you permanently. But these ant heals are always going to stay with you. So they're, they're actually called ant builders. And there are five different types of ant builders. They all uh, will give you different benefits. And they actually use cornucopias to give you permanent upgrades. So whenever you do find one of these ant hills, and you can find one once per run, and they spawn randomly throughout the map, but you can only find one, they're gonna uh, spawn back to your starting area. And if you go up to them, if you use cornucopias, you can get uh, several different upgrades. And the next way you can get permanent upgrades is through cats, and they work in, um, they work just like ant hills. So instead of finding ant hills, you'd find cat plushies, and each little cat will give you different bonuses. And uh, you can get these bonuses through spinning cornucopias through the cat trader, and he will be at your starting area just like the ant hills will be. And finally, we get to the years, and every time you beat the game, you unlock the next year, starting from one and ending at ten. And keep in mind, if you do unlock the next year, you don't actually have to play on it. You can just keep playing on the first year, and then you can play on the second year when you feel like you're ready to beat the next one. All right, and that's about it for the guide, and I hope it I hope it actually helps some people that want to play this game and get into it. And one more thing I wanted to mention is that a new DLC just uh, got unlocked and launched for the consoles, known as Reap What You Crow. I don't have it yet, though I do plan on getting it. 
asked about it for this video. Thanks for uh, watching.